is how my mom gets to eat for five days. Let's see what's inside. Hmm, an empty water bottle. How filling. Let's see what's inside day two. Hibiscus tea. Not super filling. <laughs> spearmint tea. Also not filling. No. Same for spearmint lemon tea. Oh no, I'm seeing a trend here. Where's the food? Olives with a hint of garlic. I think there's about five in here. Five olives? Mmm, L bar, choco crisp bar. I'm pretty sure that's dessert. I'll just take that right now. Barnet squash and quinoa soup mix. That looks good. Yeah. So does tomato soup mix. Looks like tomato based bisque. Okay, what else do we have? Nothing. Wait, I can't be right. That's the whole day? Okay, here we go. Five days of 800 calories a day. That's my meal for a day. Delicious. So I got the original flavors. I got the new flavors. And this lady over here, she's decided to go freestyle. Why is that? I looked at the ingredients. I'm a picky eater and I don't like all those spices and things that are in it. So how is it fair that a six foot four, 195 pound man gets 800 calories and these petite women get 800 calories? Must I guess. <laughs> I'm going to be crying by the end. <laughs> uh, I blame Joel Kahn for this episode of The Hunger Games. He's a cardiologist I've long admired who gushed on the Rich Roll podcast about a certain fast mimicking protocol that lasts five days. That's fascinating. It's fascinating and it's powerful and it's, you know, as I said, Nobel Prize nominated science. It was designed to give the benefits of a complete fast without the risk of yeah, a complete fast. Because uh -huh. those that are doing prolonged water fasting, certainly in the um, chronic illness model, are doing it in an inpatient clinic. Mm -hmm. This, a person does at home. I do it while I'm working. I'm seeing patients. But it's a breakthrough. And I don't think the public even has a clue how profound a breakthrough through this is. When I heard him gush like that, I thought, oh yeah, I'm going to starve for five days. So I did what any thoughtful father and husband would do. I roped my wife and daughter into suffering with me. We decided to get our blood tested before and after and delve into the science as deeply as we could because there's a thousand resets and cleanses out there and if we're going to starve for five days, we want to make sure this one is legit. I purchase fasting instructional programs all the time. I'm like, okay, I want to do a three-day fast, so what do I do? And then the program instructs me to not eat food for three days. <laughs> You don't come across that kind of knowledge on your own. Turns out this one is the brainchild of Dr. Walter Longo, the highly respected director of the USC Longevity Center. He wrote a great book I loved. But if you're curious about him, he gave a great TEDx talk that got a million and a half views so far, and it's a great place to start. Turns out he and his team have studied fast mimicking diets for a very long time in both mice and humans, and the results really are impressive. So the mice that have been on the diet uh, periodically have about half of the tumors, but these tumors also occur later, and you see there on the right, the red dots are the, from the mice that were on the fasting mimicking diet, and the gray dots are on the mice that are on the regular diet. So a lot less cancer later in life, and a lot of the tumors are benign in nature instead of the malignant ones that are developed by, by the mice on the regular diet. And if you look at IGF-1, one of the, the key uh, markers, risk factor for cancer, uh, people that had normal level uh, of IGF-1 to begin with, there was a small drop. But people that had, they were at risk for cancer, they had very high levels, it dropped a lot more. In this episode, I'll take you through what we experienced and whether we would ever do this again. I'm at the end of day one as we speak, and I'm a little bit hungry. We don't have anything to do with Prolon, the company that Dr. Longo founded that produces the meal kits and claims to donate its profits to fund research. We just bought our kits from their website and paid $200 a kit. I confess to being a miserable and skeptical faster. For 35 years, I did a 24-hour water fast once a month, and I once did a 72-hour water fast. I passed out cold at the end of one of those 24-hour water fasts, and I never felt great that day or the day after. I know, some people thrive on OMAD one meal a day every day. Much respect to them. I don't know how they do it. I've always trained for long rides and runs for races, and I think I'd end up face down in a ditch if I only ate one meal a day. And I feel so hangry. Breakfast, dinner, and lunch. And the ice cream truck is the only reason I run anymore. 
To Prolon's credit, they offer a 20-minute phone consult after you buy the kit, which I took full advantage of. They advised me to wait until I was double vaccinated, and they also say take it easy, limit yourself to walking and yoga. Wait. Isn't yoga hard? I'll tell you what's hard. I'm at my daughter's house and she's got five super energetic kids. That's why I'm hiding out in the forest to get peace and quiet to record this. And they expect me to jump them on the trampoline and push them on the swings and run around the house and throw them on mattresses all day every day. Well, let's see how that works out when I'm hungry. Hey, push me high, Grandpa. Every couple of weeks they start a new virtual group by Zoom with some really amazing leaders. We had 94 people on our first meeting and we had tons of questions. Like what do you do if you think olives are disgusting? Our leader is Kristen Kirkpatrick who's written a book on fatty liver disease and was the lead dietitian for the Cleveland Clinic Wellness and Prevention Center for years. This is the sixth time she's done the Prolon Protocol button for punishment. Her normal diet is plant-based keto. Unusual. Dr. Long goes very down on animal food-based keto diets in his book, saying they double the risk of dying of any cause and multiply the risk of cancer by three to four fold. He lives a very plant-heavy Mediterranean diet with fish maybe a couple times a week, but these kits are all vegan. Kristen made this bold claim in our first Zoom. You know, especially for the first timers, you will have that feeling of awesomeness. I've never gotten to the end of a coaching session or talk to a patient that's done prolon, and at the end they're like, oh yeah, feel awful, never doing that again. It's always the opposite. We will see about that. I hate being hungry, but so far so good in the first 24 hours. Guys, this is five days of your life. This is nothing, all right? So even for the people that are getting into the fast, kind of nervous, five days of your life, all right? You can do anything for five days. So this is what I get to eat breakfast with. How is that fair? <laughs> well, I get bananas and peanut butter and pancakes and jam and applesauce and honey. And what do I get? Um, let me go show you. Come on. Okay. So that's eat? breakfast, huh? Uh huh. And that's see? breakfast. Uh mm huh. -hmm. And that's breakfast. Uh huh. Uh huh. Just and follow I just... the instructions on her shirt. Mm. Please remain. Mm. Calm. Please remain. Oh yeah. Roaming calm. Mmm, breakfast of champions. <laughs> First day breakfast. Mmm, pretty good. Oily though. See how shiny my fingers are? Okay, it's the end of day two and whoo, that soup bag, it looks pitifully small. Look at that little bit of soup down at the bottom. I tell you one thing I've learned though, there's a little bit of soup powder left in that packet. No soup powder can go to waste. Why do these little packets make me think of Jim Gaffigan? I do wish I was there when they decided on the size of those ketchup packets. I'm not saying I need a gallon, but maybe enough for more than one fry. I always end up opening 20, I look like a heroin addict. I'm gonna party once I get set up here! So it's the morning of the third day, and I had a rough night last night. According to the Ura ring, which I wear, I went about four hours last night without sleep, and I can tell you from one until five in the morning, uh, I was a little bit clammy and I felt nauseous. I think it was my fault. Last night I couldn't resist here in beautiful Oregon taking the two older girls on a five mile hike, which is not in the Prolon uh, program. And uh, I'd heard from Joel Kahn that you could have, if you got in trouble, you could have a little celery and cucumber. So I ate a, a cucumber. You feel phenomenal. At least a lot of people feel phenomenal. You can get a little hangry. You're allowed to cheat a little with some celery and sliced cucumber, pretty uh, calorie and nutrient sensing pathway neutral food. So in this morning's Zoom call, the chat channel was filled with comments with people saying how great they felt. And I thought, oh no, I'm going to be the whiner and complainer here and post about my nausea and clamminess for four hours. And Kristen responded, that might be a question for the medical team. They monitor the chat and they take emails from you as the fast goes on. And she said, but my guess is your body is probably used to a lot of calories, which mine is. And this may be your first fast, which it was for me. And your body's just having a little tough time adjusting. So that was last night. So Annie Bean, you're looking pretty chill on the morning, the third morning. Oh man, I am tired this morning. I, I don't know that I'd say I'm hungry, I, but I am just tired. I could fall asleep right now. Walking requires a little bit more effort, a little bit, I'm conserving my steps. <laughs> so you were concerned about being on the edge of underweight for Prolon when you started. Yeah, I, they have kind of cutoffs. You don't want to be under a BMI of 18.5, I think, and they have like weight cutoffs in the, in the material. 
and I'm just right on the borderline. I mean, I, I always eat as much as I'm hungry for, and I've never been worried about being underweight, but um, I guess when you're fasting like this, you have lower reserves, and so maybe it would be a little bit harder when you're on the lighter side. And you've had to be pretty busy with all your five kids. <laughs> That's true. I kind of knew this day was coming, and so yesterday I uh, made a whole bunch of chili and things for my kids to eat today, cut up lots of fruit, and I thought today would be a good chill day. So so what do you think the next four or five days are going to hold? So I'm optimistic that tomorrow I'm going to access that euphoric, lovely, clear-headed... Um, mindset that comes at the end of a fast like this. I'm hopeful that that will be the case, but at this point I'm just kind of tired. <laughs> so we'll see. So you originally thought freestyling was a good idea for your mom. Now you have second thoughts about it? Yeah, I'm reading more about their recommendations and I think that it, it just feels a little bit more risky now to do it without their exact kit. I mean, it's hard with the kit, so doing it without is just a little bit more risky. People do it, and they're fine, and my mom seems to be doing great with it, so I think it'll be okay, but I don't recommend to do it at home. <laughs> and she's just using up the L drink that we're not drinking? Yeah, because some of the stuff that came with our kit, like the fasting bars and the L drink, we didn't need all of them for the for our program and so she's just able to use those and then supplement with you know we're having um like veggie soups twice a day and so i made her a veggie soup that fits the same um like nutritional profile as our soups and so she's just doing those so what is that olive oil going in there olive oil we've got broccoli and onions and we're going to do zucchini and garlic and some sweet potato and brown rice how come she gets so much food and we get so little you know i think that's the beauty of whole plant foods there's a lot of bulk for a few calories so she's got like tons of broccoli and zucchini in her soup that are practically zero calorie and then her calories in here are going to come from olive oil sweet potato and brown rice I was lucky lady fasting crackers fasting crackers what's in the fasting crackers just two ingredients is just flax meal and um, sesame seeds mm. well plus water and salt but flax meal is pretty high calorie right. you know? It is. So with the fast, you're going to do a lot of um, complex carbs and a lot of fat and not as much protein. Um, so what little corner of that does she get? Freestyle. And I'm like, oh, it's easy. And then I'm like, I don't want people at home to be trying to go freestyle. And then it's my fault. What and could it hurt? Mom? People, people do five-day water fasts. They don't do that at home with no supervision. I did. I did 72 hours. And I worked during the day. How did that work out for you? Not very well. <laughs> so it's after midnight on day three of the fast. That's a full moon in the city of Salem behind me. And I can't sleep because I'm starving. Kristen says the first time you do this fast, it's the toughest and nights three and four are the toughest of all. And Dr. Longo says it gets easier. It's like running your first 10K, it's really tough. But after that, if you do subsequent fasts, it gets easier. Let's hope so, because I have another box. So in a few months, I gotta do a second one. So on this morning's call, I asked about activities, like taking the grandkids to the zoo, and they gave advice. Kristen said, no, you should really limit things on Prolon. And I really respect their advice. Uh, but anyway, it's a beautiful day at the zoo. <laughs> so this is midday through day four, and I have to admit, I didn't sleep well last night, and my Aura Ring <laughs> app yelled at me in the morning saying, you slept fitfully and you only got four and something hours. Oh, you got to do better. Yeah, it was a little bit of a bold choice to come to the zoo today, but um, I feel pretty good. Surprisingly good, actually. So, I have some energy and I'm not too hungry at this point. And uh, you slept well last night? I did. I haven't had any middle of the night issues. So on the call this morning, this time people weren't saying they felt so great. There was a lot of talk about hunger and being depleted. And we talked about food and how it was like, Oh, you see food and you say, I'll have what he's having. In fact, I'll have what he's having right now. What? I want some of that. I know, if only, right? Mm -hmm. You're saying I can't have it? Too many calories. Too many calories. Way <laughs> too many calories. Kristen said this morning, the first time she did prolong May, the first two times, she'd get to day three or four, which were the hardest days, and say, oh, I don't know if I can do this. Ah, I had that thought last night. 
I thought I had this great self-discipline, but last night in the middle of the night, I was thinking, I don't know, man, can I do really do this? So the strange thing is when I just sort of lollygag around the zoo and feel sorry for myself, I feel depleted. But when we have, like we played tag out on the lawn, I feel great, I feel great now. Of course, I'm gonna pay for all this tonight as I starve through the night. So, um, and you've been encouraging your physician husband to do this. <laughs> yeah, he has a family history of colon cancer and I would love to do anything we can to reduce that, so. So the last couple of mornings, there's been a lot of positive chatter on the Zoom calls about weight loss. Some people lost five, some people lost nine so far. And Kristen said, that's great, but the real focus should be on autophagy. The Nobel Assembly at Karolinska Institute has today decided to award the 2016 Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine to Yoshinori Usumi for his discoveries on mechanisms for autophagy. I listened to Professor Osumi's Nobel lecture and it was fascinating. Let's think about the human body. Our body makes about two to 300 grams of protein every day, but we only intake about 70 to 80 grams of protein for, from the diet. The amino acid required for protein synthesis mostly come from the degradation of our body's own proteins. The short story is the body salvages the protein from aging and disease cells through autophagy to make new ones, which is essential to health. Occasional starvation accelerates the process, as does exercise. Dr. Osumi pronounces the word autophagy, by the way, which is translated from the Greek meaning self-eating. I think of it as salvaging parts from old cells to make new ones, recycling. It's counterintuitive to most people that a lower protein diet keeps the process working well, whereas higher protein diets interfere with it. You would think it would be the opposite, which is probably a big reason the public is so focused on protein. So the big question for me is, would I ever do this again? And the answer is yes, because it forced me to do a deep dive into the science, and I believe in it. Dr. Longo explains that fasting forces the body to kill off weak cells, growing new ones when refeeding begins. By the way, my refeeding began last night around 11 p.m. Friday night, so that would be five nights, five days, and four hours that I made it. And last night, I was a zombie, but I decided to eat a fast bar and a little salad so that I could be chipper this morning in front of the camera for you guys. I'm resolved to do these five-day fasting mimics twice a year, which puts my next one in November. I'm not looking forward to it. But I don't feel so good after some of my hard workouts either until a day or two later, but I believe in them and they do make me feel better in the long term. So it's the evening of day five. How do you feel? I feel good that it's day five. <laughs> Glad to have the end of it. But do you feel as good as you do normally? I would say I feel you know, sort of okay right right this minute. I was really hungry this afternoon, extremely hungry. But you didn't have that feeling of euphoria that some people are having? No, I did not have any euphoria. Well, why do you think that is? My best guess is because my diet had not changed that much. It was only the quantity that had changed. I see, so you were whole food plant-based yeah, before. Yeah, basically, mostly whole food plant-based. And this diet was uh, a vegan diet, except for a little honey. And so the diet itself was pretty much the same sort of food that I normally eat. So would you do this again? No, I really don't have any desire to do it again. Um, I was at the, the borderline with my weight that whether I could should do it because I didn't have a whole lot of weight to lose. You got a friend. Yeah, I do. He's a cute one. Does that grass make me hungry? Would you eat it now? Not quite that desperate, <laughs> but close. Do, do you think our circumstances with all the kids, we had to have a lot of energy this week, made it harder? Oh, definitely. That and the temptation of the kitchen. Even washing dishes, when even looking at the dishes made me hungry. My favorite game must have been, guess what? What? Saturday. Day! Why? Because you I was back at full energy. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and then we ate lots of cool foods. Oh, and we ate lots of cool foods too. What about the zoo day? Did you like that? Oh, the zoo day was quite good. You were a bit tired though. Mm. Just a bit. Yeah. You didn't really run and play tag. 
Well, I tagged you once. No, 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 boo boo! You're in big trouble. You don't think I did? No. Then you got I super wiped out after tag. Yet. And then I did get super wiped out after tag. And you just walked around and stopped from just. <laughs> yeah, I was hungry. Look at those huge. It's day seven. How you feeling? Well, I feel like I didn't fast. I mean, my actually, I can feel a difference in my abdomen still. Everything is kind of leaner and tighter than it was. I didn't think I had much weight to lose, but I lost a few pounds of visceral fat. So I'm really happy about that. I hope I can keep it off. So I learned some things from the coaching this week. One of the things is Kristen said portion control does not work, as she's learned from 20 years in coaching people on diet and weight loss. She said what does work is to ask yourself if you're hungry, and if you're not, then you don't need to go on and stuff yourself. And I have had a history of stuffing myself. So I asked my physician son-in-law, who was once 310 pounds and is now very slender about that. Yeah, so it takes the human stomach about 20 minutes to recognize that it's not hungry anymore. But the average American spends about five minutes on a meal. Well, that's a problem because they're not going to leave feeling full unless they eat so much that they reach the point of stuffed. And so what we have done in our culture is that we have taught ourselves to eat and eat and eat until we feel that we can't put anything else inside of us. And then we think, oh, this is full. No, it's not full. That's stuffed. One thing I learned was how often I eat. I just snitch food like off my kids' plates or while I'm prepping food or in between meals or apparently I eat all day long because the very first day of the fast when I was trying to pay attention, I realized I had to stop myself about 50 times and I wouldn't have guessed that. I would have said, oh, I maybe eat you know three meals and a couple snacks, but not so. But what we did think about for five days was how long do we have to grit our teeth before the next scrap of food? We'd see an apple and our hearts would jump and we'd say, oh, and then we'd suddenly realize, oh, we can't have that. I'm such a whiner, but it did seem exhausting to think about food nonstop for five days. We also thought about people with complicated diets who have to calculate carbohydrates or calories or something like that. We just eat whole plants and don't worry about it. Kristen was asked, what is the best diet? And she said, it's the one you can stick to. But she gave a gold star to the Mediterranean diet, low in meat and rich in colors from fruits and vegetables. You know, I came away from it with a new appreciation for food. So one thing that happened during the fast is I noticed I really appreciated every bite, savored every taste, except the soup I didn't like. Um, and I'm still in that mode. I really, really appreciate food and I savor every bite. The three of us thought often about people who are hungry, not for five days like we were feeling sorry for ourselves, but for months, years, a way of life with little children who cry because there's just not enough food. Ugh. As for the blood tests we did before the fast, everything came back normal. For example, Tony and my IGF-1 levels were at 110. But we decided not to get retested right after the fast because the numbers that Walter Longo quotes are on test subjects who'd gone a year with three rounds of Prolon. So I decided to get my test after the next round of Prolon and a month of recovery. What did you think of the Prolon kit? Uh, the Prolon kit was super easy to use, um, very well laid out. I thought the soups were yummy. I thought the bars were pretty good. Um, what I didn't love about it was... Um, the pills? The what? The pills? <laughs> the pills were fine. They didn't taste good, but that's fine. What I didn't love about it is that um, I couldn't eat whatever I wanted. And by day five, I kind of was like, I want to eat what I want to eat. So good news, because then day six came around. As for what I think of Prolon, the package was first class. The food was good despite my complaining. The support was over the top great, and now I'm gushing about the science like Joel Kahn does. The only things that bothered me a little bit was not eating fresh produce during the five days like leafy greens like I normally do. And also all that packaging, all the stuff that's gonna end up landfill was bothering me. Would you ever do it again? I think I would. I think I would. I, I've heard it gets easier maybe the second time and for sure the third time and it was kind of an interesting and different challenge. I believe in the science. But would I recommend it to everyone I know? Absolutely, but I might experiment with freestyling next year.
Thank you so much for watching that whole long saga and putting up with my whining. If you do have fasting stories of your own, I'd love to read about them in the comment section. I think we all would. I put a lot of time and effort into my videos so they don't come out very fast. So if you do subscribe, you're not gonna get overwhelmed by notifications. And now after eating, I feel so good. I could dance and sing all day long until I get too dizzy to stand anymore.